So what I have here today is our very own from Mobot Cilion cleaning tool set. So this cleaning tool set comprises of a hand rag, a chain cleaning tool, a comprehensive brush, a corner brush, a gap tool, uh, and a tire brush, and a sickle tool. So in this cleaning kit, it's basically all that you would need to make sure that you can fully and effectively clean your bike. So uh, there are also, very important, there's also two kinds of brushes right here. There are the soft bristles, which are very easy. It's very, very soft over here. And there are the hard bristles that you can see here. It's very hard bristles. So you want to make sure that you use this for selective parts of your bike. For example, you use the soft bristles for frames and use the hard bristles, for example, your dry train. The reason is hard bristles can easily scratch the frame of your bike and we don't want that. So what we want to use, for example, for frame cleaning, soft bristles, which over here is the comprehensive brush. And when you want to clean, when you want to wipe off your frame, you can use the hand rag. And for hard bristles, use it on the dry train and mainly that, other than that, it's just hard to get to corner, hard to get to parts of your bike. So diming right in, very simple today for cleaning bikes, it just doesn't take up much of your time. But today I'll just go through the trifold and the bifold. Main differences will be the brakes and the drivetrain, which I'll get more in depth later on. So firstly, I'll go through the trifold. So for the trifold, what you want to do for the frame, you just want to get a wet cloth first, like just now, wipe it down. Once you come back, you wipe down. Very easy, just wipe it down first. And for example, if there are corners that are hard to reach, what you can do, you can grab a brush like this, a very small corner brush. Some of you may have this in your kitchen or so. If you don't want to use this anymore, feel free to use it on your bike. There are small gaps, for example, behind the tires that are hard to get to, but have a lot of dirt and other foreign materials stuck inside. You can just stick it in there and give it a good clean. And then you can take your seat post. Inside the seat post, you can just clean it up because there'll be a lot of things that, come, that actually just come inside here. And also you can repeat for the front tire as well. And if there are other parts of your bike which you find hard to get to, for example, in your, near the ray hub over here, you can just stick it in, give it a good wipe. After that, take it out and that will be mainly it for the frame. So because you just want to make sure that you eliminate all of the dirt and materials that you find on your bike. So after that, after wiping your bike down, what you want to do is, that will be good enough, but if you want to make it polished or you want to make it clean, we do have that over here as well. We have this repair polish wax over here or cleaning foam. You can feel free to use both right here. But for this one, I'll just use the polish wax. So what we do, just spray a bit on our rag. Afterwards, we just give it a wipe on our frame. So this is just a quick demonstration. It's a quick wipe on our frame. Let's give it a nice coat. And afterwards, we'll be good to go. Give it onto the handlebars, onto your grips as well, and even onto your saddle. So that will be mainly it for the frame. Can you show them the bottle up close again? Bottle up close again? Okay. So the two, uh, the two that I have here, okay. The one that I just used is the Cilion Repair Polished Wax. This is up on our website, you can download mm. 990. Mm. So this is currently available on our website, 990, or you can just come down to our stores and purchase it from us. So that is a very good polishing wax that you can use for your bicycle to make sure that it looks sparkling clean and you just be, you just be catching eyes left, right, center when you're on the paths. <laughs> so next up will be our tires. After a wet ride, a muddy ride, your tires especially are very dirty. So what we want to do is remove all the dirt from your tires. What you can do, either use a wet rag or a tire brush. Tire brush that I have here, which is part of the cleaning tool set that we have right here. 
Yeah. So what we want to do is very easy to use. You just clip it in your hand like this, very easy. And then what we can do, hug it around your tire. Hug it around your tire right here. And what we can do is, let me just show you. Okay, can we come to this? Come to this tire over here, where it's a much better view. There we go. Okay, much easier for you to see now. So you just hug it around the tire and just give it a few revolutions. What you do is remove all the dirt from the treads inside the tire. The reason why we use the tire brushes is because it has the brushes that goes right into the treads of the tire. And if, as compared to using a wet rag, which you can, which is just to clean the tire, which will be more preferable after using the brush. So you can use the brush first and then the wet rag and then you dry it off. Or you can just use the wet rag and dry it off. So now after I dry it off, you can see the tire looks good as new and ready to go at the same time. So the first two things I covered for you, the frame and your tire will be the same for both trifolds and bifolds. So no differences there. So now I'll get into your brakes. So for braking, for your trifold, you use pull caliper braking. And for your bifolds, over here we have a disc brake model. Some bifolds do come with pull caliper brakes, which will be the same principles as I'll explain later on right now for in the trifold concept. So before we move on, for the wheels, before we move on, uh, we always want to make sure that as well we keep we keep our rims clean. So as for our rims, because especially for pad braking, the rims over here are very important for the stopping. We do want we want to make sure that there's no dirt or any contamination of any other foreign material on the rims, which can affect your pad braking. So what you want to do there, most to most, use a wet cloth. Do not use anything else other than a specified disc cleaner, other than a specified brake cleaner, sorry, or a wet towel. So what you want to do is just get the towel there and go a few spins. Just want to make sure that your rim is nice and clean. As you can see, it's very dirty, so you just want to make sure it's clean, and afterwards, you just dry it off with a towel, and your brakes will be good to go already. Afterwards, if you do find your spokes are dirty, you can always, again, use a wet cloth. Just clean your spokes, each one of them, just to make sure that there's no mud sticking on them. And if you do find the casing of your internal hub is also dirty, you can just sneak in your towel through the spokes and give it a good wipe overall before drying it off with a dry towel. Now I'll just quickly dry it off. And then all the dirt that you picked up from your right is not there anymore and it'll be left with a spotless tyre which will be gleaming on your next ride. <laughs> so this will be the same as uh, this will be the same as the bifold. So the bifold, trifold, wheels and frame will both be the same. Same principles in terms of cleaning. So right now, I'll just head on down to the brakes again. So, first part of the pool caliper braking system, your rims are very important. Your rims, because they directly affect your, your braking performance. If it's dirty, your braking performance will not be as effective. But right now, we've just cleaned it. You saw how dirty it was. Now it's spotless. And what you can try to see right now, is so I'll just move the bike. Next will be to check your pad brakes. Your pad brakes over here. Sometimes when you ride, uh, dirt or other materials can get stuck inside the treads of your pad brakes. So if you want to give that a quick check, just take a size 4 Allen key and take out your pad brakes from here. Remember to show the camera the tools. Mm, yes. Every time you use it. Oh, okay. okay. So before I get into this again, size 4 Allen key right here. Remember that you're looking for a size 4 Allen key. Okay, so now first, we loosen our brakes, which is just a single knob. Afterwards, we
we check the threads of the bricks because usually foreign material may get stuck in these gaps and if there are anything stuck in these gaps you can remove them with a soft brush or using your fingernails while you're washing it down iron net do not use anything else to clean your bricks so after you're done with them sneak them back in and then you tighten them accordingly make sure to always align your pet bricks when you take them out and when you put that back in to align them set the pet brick onto the rim where it was in the same configuration and tighten accordingly and after you have aligned always do a quick check to make sure that your pet bricks are working by giving it a spin and afterwards a good break so it's a good spin and then we break it's all good to go already so very important things to look out for when doing <laughs> very important things to look out for <laughs> so very important to look out for when doing your cleaning of your pet bricks one especially when doing pet bricks do not only use a wet towel or specified brake cleaner on your rims and same as for your pet bricks always look out for your rims and your pads make sure it's both make sure it's always clean and to only use a wet towel or a soft brush nothing else no lubricant no degreaser that will contaminate and affect your braking performance overall now for the now for the brakes off now for the brakes off the bifold so right now i'll just turn the bike here can you zoom in from there can you come in from here Okay. Mm. Okay. Here we go. Alrighty. Okay. You can zoom in from here. This is just for the bricks off your bifold, which are the disc bricks. So as compared to pad bricks, disc bricks are very volatile to corrosion. Make sure to not use any form of cleaner other than this brake cleaner or a wet towel if you want to if you're using wet towel just wet it nicely and make sure that it's completely clean do make sure to only use a normal used towel that you have okay i repeat myself make sure to only use a new towel not a used towel at all the, the reason why is because a used towel can contain uh, materials that can corrode your disc brake while cleaning so make sure to always use a new towel, especially when using a wet, when you're using the wet towel option to clean the disc brake. If not, you can use a disc brake cleaner that we do sell here. Let me just quickly show you. So it is called disc brake cleaning foam. So very special foam that you just spray onto your disc brake. And pretty much from what I've learned, after you spray, you just let it sit, give it a few spins, and it'll be all good. So, just a demonstration. So, as you can see, when you spin it around, the disc brake actually, this brake cleaner actually just spreads out itself. You give it a bit more. After you give the left side, you give the right side. So, these, this one is a special disc brake cleaner, just meant for disc brakes, nothing else because these brakes are very easy to get corroded and once it's corroded, it affects your braking performance overall. So the foam will slowly go away and after a while, you can just simply wipe off the excess. So once you wipe off the excess, very simply done. You can see your disc brake cleaner, how it worked. The disc brake initially was very dirty if you can focus that yeah it was pretty dirty in the start but now it's all clean so yeah so that is the first option of how to clean a disc brake which is using the disc brake cleaner the second option will be to use a completely new towel and just give it a good soak <laughs> yes, we are wetting our towels legitimately. We have a bucket of water which we just filled for you all. And you just get that wet towel 
and just on your disc brake, just give it a good turn, get it some contact with the towel. After a few turns, most of the dirt will come off and there you go. Again, do not use an old towel that you use on other bikes or other, for other uses. Use a completely new towel because disc brakes can easily get corroded and it will directly affect your performance when you brake. And you don't want braking, braking performance to be affected. And once it's corroded, and yeah, and day you'll be spending a lot of money to replace your disc overall and it's not ugly and it's not pretty at all. So you want to make sure to avoid that completely. So that's it. Uh, reminder for, that's it for the brakes. If you do have any questions at this point, do feel free to ask and I'll clarify that for you. But I just went through pad brakes and disc brakes. So are there any questions so far to answer? Uh, I think someone asked mm. how to clean this brake if got squeaking sound when braking how to solve so I think that is a contaminated disc pad usually so uh, I, I, I think you have went through this one already for okay. the disc brake mm. okay then some people ask um, okay can we use WD-40 to clean uh, so usually when do we use WD-40 WD-40 mainly for hinges and joints yeah we okay. would not advise, especially for WD-40, do not use it for your brakes at all. Those are lubricants. Yeah, yeah. okay. So, yeah. so uh, usually that is for the joints. Mm, so yeah. this person asked whether we can use to clean. Actually, we should use a cleaning ah, foam. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Uh, then after that, someone asked, can you use Singer oil? <laughs> what kind of oil? Singer oil. Let me just... Singer oil. Yeah. Singer oil. Ah. Yeah. Not the Singer. Ah. <laughs> okay, single oil is also a lubricant. Okay. So actually we okay. would... Maybe for these yeah. lubricants, you can use in a chain, but it's very preferable to use a uh, already designed and uh, formulated chain cleaner for your bike, which yeah. I'll get into real soon also. Okay, so here. yeah, for those people that are wondering, um, is this live being recorded? Yes, we are recording this. Okay, after this, Nick will actually edit the live and put on YouTube. Correct, Nick? Yes. Okay, then after that, uh, Got someone ask, this person is Patricia Mock, say Nick so cute, don't know whether to stand or sit. And Serene Mock actually say Nick is very clear in explaining. Okay, so yeah, yeah thank you so much. Now we are only halfway through. Actually, uh, there are still parts that Nick will share with you guys. I will leave it to him. Yeah. Okay, so basically I've covered uh, already the frame, the frame, tyres and your braking, which are pretty much the very essential components for your bike. But now, lastly, will be your drivetrain, which I will consider the most important part of your bike uh, alongside your brakes. So for your drivetrain cleaning now, we have two kinds of drivetrains here. For the trifold, we have our internal gear hub system. And for the bifold, we have our outer cassette. So now I'll just demonstrate to you how to uh, get the grimes, get the grease, get the dirt off your drivetrain. By firstly, in the structure, I'll show you how to clean your chain, followed by your chain ring, rear derailleur, and your exterior cassette. So, diving right in first into our trifold right here. Let me just flip it around for you. Let's get a good view of that. Okay. Okay, so right here is your whole drive train. What consists of a what does the drive train consist of? Drive chain consists of your chain, your chain ring, your crank arm, your rear derailleur, and your cassette. And in this case, also an internal gear hub. So, firstly, what we will do is clean our chain. Our chain usually inside, in between all these rollers right here, in between here, will get clogged up with dirt, will get clogged up with uh, all sorts of things that you pick up along in your ride. So, firstly, we want to eliminate that overall. And what we will use now is firstly firstly is a chain cleaning tool from the Cilion cleaning kit and secondly will be our bike chain decreaser our Cilion bike chain decreaser that we do sell here as well okay these two will be in our first step which I'll show you right now so what you want to do is firstly decrease your chain to decrease your chain just add the decreaser onto your chain Add a decreaser onto the rollers of your chain. 
And secondly, we'll add our chain cleaning tool. So we'll just attach that to our chain right here. And what's this gonna, what's, what this is going to do, because in separate videos, in other videos in the past, all I used was a single rag. A rag can definitely be used, but uh, if you want very thorough cleaning of your chain, use a chain cleaning brush tool because the brush is, is actually going to penetrate into your chain to get all the dirt and other materials out of your chain much better and much more effectively. So right now, I'll just hold on to the chain tool, hopefully you can see, and I'll just give it a few spins. So what this is going to do is remove all the grease and dirt off your chain. Give it a little twist. So after that, we simply take it out. And right now, I don't know if you can see, but your chain is pretty much looking cleaner than it was definitely before. So that is the point of the decreaser. If you want to give it an extra, uh, extra clean, because this was mainly focused into, into the rollers of your chain, what you want to do is use a rag and just clean the outer parts of your chain, which I can quickly do for you, is to give it an overall more polished look onto your chain, make it more clean. You can do that very easily. Just take a rag, you don't mind getting dirty, just giving it a good wipe. So now your chain is fully decreased. So as you can see, it's very shiny as it was before. It's now it's very black, full of grease, full of dirt. Now it's much cleaner. Now it's fully decreased. Then we can focus on our chain ring, our rare derailleur, and the cassette that's hiding at the back over here. So what we're gonna do for that, how are you gonna remove all the dirt over here? Let me just quickly show you. For this part, I will use, let's see what I'm gonna use. I'll use our get brush, which is right here. So this get brush is also part of the Cilion tool cleaning set. And this actually, what this does, it, it gets into the very thin, thin parts of your drag train. So especially this, you can see how thin it gets. So let me just quickly demonstrate. Let me just cl clear this up and turn this around for you. Okay, some people are actually asking how much the kit is. Later, we will go through how yes. much the products are, okay? So, we'll continue. Okay, so as you can see right here, this is your chain ring. So, usually you'll find a lot of dirt and, and pretty much a lot of materials that has been stuck on the teeth of the chain ring. So, what you want to do is get a few rotations in and your get brush there. Just remove all the dirt that you have over there. It can be quite an awkward angle of attack, but it's definitely manageable. So this just removes all the dirt off and what you get left with is a spotless chain ring. And then you do the same for the rollers that you have over here. Firstly, as you can see, just get the bottom roller over here going. Just remove all the dirt there because you do find these rare derailers sometimes gets pretty, pretty dirty. So you just remove all the dirt over there, followed by the top over here. Just give it a good clean. And then followed by your two gears over here. If you're using a, if you're using a nine speed, there'll be three. If you're using a six speed, there'll be two. Just get it in between because usually your dry train, your cassette, your chain ring and your ready derailleur will catch it along the way. So you just want to remove that because if not, it's going to go back into your chain. So once you find that your chain and your whole entire dry train is clean, is spotless, there's no more dirt left, then we can apply, we can apply the lubricant onto the chain. So this lubricant, the reason why we apply it on the last step is because 
we don't want to lubricate an, a dirty chain. Lubricating a dirty chain will only make your ride performance worse as it will make as it will dirty the whole <laughs> as it will dirty it will add more okay let me just repeat myself adding lubricant onto an already dirty chain will just affect your ride performance it will worsen your ride performance why is that because when your chain is dirty there's already dirt there and when you add lubricant and dirt together it just makes a whole new kind of uh, liquid which is not going to help your ride at all which is why we fully clean our chain we decrease it we clean our whole drive train and then we add the lubricant to make sure that your ride performance is always smooth and great so now we add the lubricant so the lubricant that we have over here is the chain loop from Cilion <laughs> the chain loop from Cilion the C7 that we have over here so where do you want to apply that a good rule of thumb is to apply it to each roller of your drivetrain. By that. By that. So we just get the spray over here. Aim it away from your brakes and give it a good roll. Go for one complete revolution. And then just get it into the rest of your drivetrain. So yeah, once that is done, you let it sit for a bit. And after, once, why you let it sit for a bit is because you want your rollers in your chain to really soak up all the lubricant. And after it sits for about maybe uh, 10 minutes, then you can wipe off the excess lubricant using a simple rag. A dirty one will do at the same time. Best to use a clean rag. After you wiped off the excess, your chain will look sparkly and ready to go. So yeah, that is it for the chain over here. That's it for the drivetrain of the trifold. So repeating again for the trifold, the for the trifold, what you want to do for cleaning your drivetrain, firstly decrease degrees the chain either using a chain cleaning tool or a simple rag will do best for a thorough clean is to use the chain cleaning tool then afterwards you want to clean your drivetrain your other parts of your drivetrain which consists of your chain ring your outer cassette and sorry just eight and your <laughs> internal hub so okay sorry your chain ring your outer cassette and your derailleur so after you clean those three, then only then you apply your lubricant. So that's how to just fully clean your dry your dry train for your trifold. <laughs> All right. So now I'll just quickly move on to the last segment, which is the dry train for your bifold. So as you can see over here. Okay. Mm, okay. Okay, so now the drivetrain for your bifold. Again, a quick reminder, if you don't have a work stand, that is okay. You can always just flip over your bike like I did over here for the Royale. Just put it on its handlebar and seat. It will perfectly balance itself, just like that. And always make sure uh, to have nice little carpet or rug or towels that you can just lay down and just so that you don't dirty the floor when you do all this stuff with your bike. Because the last thing you want is a dirty floor after I explain all this to you all. Then you just go on and do it, and then the floor gets dirty, you can't complain, you can't complain to me. But yeah, okay. So now lastly, it's just the drivetrain for your bifold. Right here, we're using an outer cassette. It's a Shimano Tiagra 10-speed bike over here. So what we have, the difference is mainly the outer cassette, because over there we had the internal hub, which we don't have over here at all. We have a larger rear derailleur at the same time. So we're going to repeat the same process first. We're going to decrease our bike, we're going to decrease our chain. So what we take first is our decreaser and we apply it onto our chain. Okay. So you just gently apply the decreaser to our chain. Again, the use of the decreaser is to eliminate all is to clean up 
and eliminate all the dirt and the grime that you collect while riding your bike. So just give it a few turns with the chain cleaning tool. Okay, let me just cycle it back. I'll just hold it from here. Just give it a few revolutions. Give it a twist. Make sure to maximize all the cleaning opportunity you have for your chain right here. After a good few turns, you soon instantly recognize the impact of the chain cleaner as all the dirt has been come has come off. As you can see, very dirty. Should have worn the gloves that Bobby gave me <laughs> for my first life. Very, very dirty. It's on the table right there, fortunately. But yes, our chain is now eradicated from the dirt. All the rollers are pretty much practically clean because they are all in here and on my hand. So Right now, we'll take the wet rag and we'll just clean it off. So they need to be prepared to get dirty. Yes, or <laughs> be smart and wear the gloves that Bobby gave you. <laughs> <laughs> so once that is done, you can just remove the excess decreaser. Excess decreases is off, chain looks nice and shiny and clean right now. Okay, so next step, again, we can take our get brush from the cleaning toolkit. <laughs> get the get brush from the cleaning toolkit to clean up our chain ring and our cassette at the same time and our rear derailleur. So while you want again, you can see the dirt build up from all the rights in this in this right, I mean, all from you can see the dirt build up from all the rollers in here, or the red derailleur from all the different rights. You can just get your brush and just wipe it off. Just brush it off. You can see already chips of it is coming off. It's making its mark. So you just give it another revolution. Chip off all the dirt over here that's been built up. Because all this, there's no point of cleaning your whole drivetrain if you're still going to allow for dirt to be still on your drivetrain because it will just repeat its whole process of filling up your chains with the dirt that's already been there. So best to make sure that everything is spotless when you do this clean. So once this one is done, repeat for your top roller. Then give it a half spin and then repeat. Be very patient. Be very tedious with your cleaning. It may be a process that may take around 20 minutes, but at the end of the day, it's worth because you are going to get a good quality right at the end of the day. So once your roller is nice and clean, spotless, you can just take a clean rag and just give it a good twist. Get a good clean there. Once that one is done, do the same. For the top roller, and there you go. So now your rollers are clean in the derailleur, and maybe you see your derailleur over here and near the spring is very, very dirty, built up with a lot of dirt. What you can use is this tool over here that I have not explained yet. It's your corner brush, part of the Cilion cleaning tool set. It can actually get into small crevices that are hard to reach into. You can just stick that in there, give it a good twist, Remove all the dirt from there. Get a good twist twist. And anywhere that you see a point of entry that you can just take advantage of the cleaning tool, just use it to your advantage to ensure that your derailleur is fully cleaned. Uh, by the way, this, all the cleaning that Nick is doing, this one advanced. Uh. Not, not say advanced, uh, but this one is, uh, this is full. 
full it's cleaning. Full cleaning. This is like full your cleaning. your full potential. <laughs> yeah, full potential. So of course you want to simple, just wipe the frame, go to the front of the video. Yeah, okay. But now Nick is really showing you guys the, the secrets. The secrets to <laughs> maintaining your bike and cleaning. Yeah, let's continue. It's just more in-depth. Uh, more thrown into the depth of cleaning your bike. So the reason for this, other than your usual method of maybe just giving a wipe down, this is to make sure that your ride quality is great, your braking performance is always top, and your frame overall is looking spotless, and your ride overall feels just great. Okay, so moving on. After that, we will use the same principle as we did this, as we did this now for the chain ring, which is using the gap brush over here and getting into the gears. So we can just do a couple of rotations here, get it behind. So just give it a few turns. It's going to remove all the dirt from the chain ring. Before you can use a rag, you just clean off the chain ring for good. It's a bit tough over here, but it'll do the job just great. Yeah. So yeah. So you want to remove all of that from the chain ring too. And now we have done the same for your rollers of the ready derailleur. Left now with your cassette. It is quite difficult to clean your rear cassette because of the amount of cogs you have over here. Here we have 10 from a very from a very small tooth over here to a very large one. So how do you clean these individual ones? Firstly, you can start off by using the grab brush, but there's also one secret tool left inside this cleaning kit which is the sickle hook tool over here. The sickle hook tool over here. What you can do, you can take advantage of this and go into the small gaps of your cassette. So as you can see here, so into the small gaps of your cassette, right, for example right here, you can, if you see a lot of dirt over there, you can just scrape it off, get a few turns, you can scrape off all the dirt from each gap of your cassette. Because these tend to get very, very dirty. So this is called a sickle hook tool. Let me just confirm that for you. <laughs> Which I'll confirm later. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So yes, it is called a wheel sickle hook. So it is a wheel so sickle yeah. hook too. It's very unique. I, from all the washing and cleaning bike videos that I've seen, I've never seen this one featured anywhere else before. This, yeah. This looks familiar to your uh, cassette remover tool, where there's a few chains connected to the tool itself, but this one is simply meant for cleaning. It'll be available in our Cilion, uh bike cleaning kit. So over here, you can see all the grease and dirt that has been built up and you can just scrape it off with the tip of your tool. So yeah, after that, what you can do for each, for each gear over here, you can slip in your rag into the same gaps as you saw before and you just give it a nice little clean in between. So then you make a, another revolution and you give it a clean again. So yes, cleaning can be very tedious at times, but for a very good looking cassette and for a great feel of ride overall, when it's all clean, you'll be very satisfied at the end of the day. Yes, you do have to repeat this for the amount of cassettes that you have. Just get in between the gaps and give it a good, give it a good spin, give it a good, good clean at the end of the day. It'll all be worth it. As you can see already, it's a much shinier as compared to the top over here because over here is much clean. Over here, you see all the dirt still, still build up over there. So what you want to do is give me a few minutes. It's a very gentle clean. 
So you can see, right, just for example of me rubbing off the largest cog over here, you can see the amount of dirt, the amount of potential dirt that is built up on your rear cassette, which would be something like this. And you want to just get it all off, you want to make sure that it's clean and spotless. So that is pretty much a good way to do it. What you want to do again for your rear cassette, you can use something to get in between the gaps. For us, what we have available is a wheel sickle hook tool. And you can use a rag to clean the cassette on its own right here. Just give it a good rub overall. And to get a small, thin fold over here to get into the gaps of, your, of each cog from the smallest one all the way to the largest one just to give it a thorough clean overall at the end of the day so yes now I fully covered the drive chain for this one again the chain decreased followed by the cleaning of the chain ring the de red derailleur and the outer cassette lastly forgot it is the lubricant lubrication of the chain so once remember after you're done all this cleaning, you, want, you still want smooth and reliable shifting from your bike. So what you want to do is just lubricate your chain. Again, why we lubricate the last? It is because you don't want a dirty chain. You don't want to lubricate a dirty chain. You want to lubricate a clean chain. Lubricating a dirty chain will only cause more issues with your ride performance as compared to lubricating with a clean chain, which will ensure that your ride is always reliable and smooth. So again, Make sure that you spray your lubricant away from your disc brake. You don't want to corrode it. Spray only towards the roller. Spray at a downward position, which is the safest, onto your floor, which can have a carpet or something to protect your floor on. So yes, just apply it gently onto your chain. So very slowly, very nicely. Make sure the chain goes one full round. And after that, I can let it spin for a bit and then it will be good to go let it sit for about 10 minutes let the rollers in the chain really soak up all that lubricant and afterwards you can just wipe off the excess so as for cleaning wise if you do want a nice uh, finish for your bike we also other than the polish wax that we have we do have this cleaning foam the Cilion cleaning foam right here. This cleaning foam. Yes, it does have a motorcycle picture, but don't be fooled, it can also be used for bicycles. <laughs> so what you want to do with this one, so yeah, last thing inside this cleaning kit that we have from the Cilion cleaning set is this hand rag over here. Very easy to wipe wherever you want, actually. You can just very, very malleable, whatever crevices that you want to get. So for the cleaning foam, the spray onto your palm over here or your rag that you have and then just wipe it onto your frame just very easily wipe it and just clean off all the dirt whatever leftovers that you missed out earlier on all the gaps get a good wipe and on the day you're getting a nice and polished product it's like doing spa for your bicycle exactly <laughs> remember a good bike always gives you a good ride okay <laughs> but yes <laughs> that will be pretty much all that i'll be presenting to you for your bike cleaning segment for your bike cleaning episode today so thank you very much for watching uh today's episode of tech talk with nick and please do leave uh questions and suggestions for what you'd like to see next 